Hello and welcome to another video. Now I've had my second lesson. I've been to the range. I've had a really good practice. This is my first time out on the course. Now at the end of my second lesson, I did some pitching. What I've got to do is to move the ball forward, my hands forward, and try and hit the ball with my chest. See, as much as my main goal swing is disconnected, my pitching is disconnected. It's all hands and flippy and pretty ugly. So I come up before me round and I do 80 of these. And some of it isn't very pretty. You see how far the ball's forward. But the one thing that stands out a mile for me here is instead of turning away from the ball, I'm swaying away from the ball. You, you look at my left trouser here, how it goes backwards. That shouldn't be happening. But over the 80 balls, it did get better. All I'm hitting here is 35 yards. That I've chosen really the most awkward distance. Yeah, there's, there's too much movement. I need to turn, not sway. So we'll get there. Quick warm up in the net. I got my little pink ball here. And this is just to remind me to go out wide as wide as I can. And I think I'm hitting it just as well as I was in the lesson, but of course, the lesson's a lesson, practice is practice, and the golf course is a completely different animal entirely. See here, I'm not trying to hit a green, but out on the golf course, I am. And that's where the different pressures apply. Now my head is absolutely full of shite. The idea of being able to play golf with your head full of shite is incredibly difficult. So what I've started doing is I've started taking a practice swing a long way away from the golf ball. Think about the mechanics there. And then when I step into the ball, all I want to be thinking about is the target, where I want the ball to go. And what I mustn't do this evening, and I'm teeing off at 6pm so there's not a lot of daylight left, what I mustn't do is second guess what possible mistake I'm going to make. So I've got to pick my target, get myself lined up to the target, which for me is the left half of this fairway. And that's all I want to think about. Yeah, shot tracer isn't exactly accurate. What that was, was slightly pulled and then it draws. Now here's a tip for you. I'm going to go up over the tree that's in front of me. Now if you want to get up over a tree like this, what you got to do is to move the ball forward but you're not going to try and hit the ball in the air. You've got to hit down at it as you normally would with a pitching wedge. All you're doing is moving it forward, which will mean that it will go higher and it will go shorter. I don't often get to play this. Normally I'm bunting it underneath, as you know. But this was the opportunity to go up and it finishes up short right of the green because obviously it's not going to go as far now my head is screaming here back foot pitching wedge chip and run but i'm actually moving it forwards using the sand wedge and trying to put this ball in the air and um, he looks pretty happy that he's done it all right, it's not very pretty. Well past the flag, but, you know, I put the ball in the air instead of my usual back foot, 
chip and run along the ground. I'm not too sure what my body was doing there, but that is a very high, short, left, three wood. I wasn't hitting them in the lesson, was I? Bunt out with a six iron. Just leaves me an eight. On the dance floor. Going to be another bogey, but I'm not really that attached to the score this evening. I'm just trying to see if I can take the lesson to the golf course. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of negative body language there, isn't there? Bound to happen. Right, flags on the front, which is the most horrible place to put it, but they seem to put it on the front all the damn time. And that is about two inches fat. Now here's another one. My body, my brain is screaming. Pitching wedge, back foot. Hit it left of the flag, blah, blah, blah. But I'm playing it forward. I got the sand wedge. Try and hit it with your chest, Simon. And that's a knife. I just thought, I've just hit 80 of those. How come I can't do it now that I'm actually on the golf course? This one's the pitching wedge, chip and run. More in my comfort zone. Much better result. Now you might ask, why on earth am I doing this? Well, I've not been happy with my golf. It's that simple. Sorry. Into the low sun, so this is dark. There's two or three that look like this. And just for a change, I've hit a draw with a driver instead of my usual fade. Now, I was at a point here where all I wanted to do was hit something hard, so I hit the pitching wedge and I hit it hard. And with the putting, I, I, I didn't care. And I didn't care in a good way. It wasn't, oh God, I'm having a bad round, I don't care anymore. It was more thinking about the process, thinking about how I'm swinging, thinking about how I'm supposed to be swinging. So the score kind of like was unimportant. So again, why am I doing this? Well, I'm not happy with the way I'm playing. Now, on some of the golf courses I've played this summer, where there are no bad memories, where the bushes and the trees aren't dripping with my blood, I'm doing okay. But when I come to Lilybrook, and I put a card in my hand on a Sunday morning in the competition, my game is incredibly fragile. And I quite easily burn up four or even five strokes on the front nine. That's my handicap gone. So I need to fix that. And it's a long, hard road. This is four months of work. This is a long, hard road. Never hook. And because it's hard, that's why so few people try to walk it but I am most certainly not afraid of what I've got to do because I know what the reward is the reward is going low properly low in competitions and being more consistent now here's a tip for you for getting out of bunkers stand a lot wider put the ball forward and then kind of squat down like you're trying to take a dump two feet behind you. And that flattens out the path of the club head and makes it easier to get out of a bunker. Number seven, going with a four iron. 
not the prettiest shot on the planet but it's got the job done that's one thing I'm fairly lucky about and something that Matt said is that my bad shots seem to be ending up in the right place well five over after seven you know the title of the video so you know what's going to happen here and just to prove that I'm gaining yards by hitting the ball properly. This is past the tree. Now I need a bit of a hook here. Fortunately, I'm hooking the three wood, but the lie is too bad to really move the ball properly. So it's a low hook that isn't gonna go its full distance because of the lie. 43 yards. Please, Simon, use your chest and move properly. That's why we play golf. <laughs>